so what's up guys welcome to another video in the my previous video we discussed about how to create an official email account using the cPanel so in this series I was to show you how you can work with cPanel from scratch from hosting your website uh, from scratch to connecting it to your users so in this video I'm going to show you how uh, you you can manage your domain create some subdomains and how you can launch your databases uh, in the cPanel so my, every website or my, every application application has to have a, a database and in this video I'm going to show you just how you can connect to your databases maybe using PHP maybe how you can uh, create a new database in a cPanel and how you can create a subdomain so in front of me here i have uh, my cPanel this is the home page or the index page of my cPanel some cPanel look a bit different uh, depending with your hosting company but it's all the same actually so the first thing that we'll discuss is how you can create a subdomain. So when you log into your cPanel, you'll get uh, this page. So find something called domains, this section called domains, and go to this icon called domains. I'll click the domains uh, hyperlink and see. So in this uh, in this page, it will show you the domains uh, that you have in your in your domain. So it will show you the subdomains, all the subdomains and the main domain. So in in this list, you can see uh, brucent.net. Don't worry, today today I'm not using Canon gadgets to show you guys, but this is still part of my domain. So. My main domain here is brocent.net and I have one subdomain which is called easy easyfix.brocent.net. So to create a new domain, you just create here a new subdomain. So we just click create a new domain. And here you just give it a name. So for this I'll say I'll just create something like YouTube because I'm making YouTube videos that Brucent.net. So after I create this, you can see here it will create automatically create this folder in your file manager where you can upload your website and your images and stuff. So to to do to submit this one and to successfully create this, you click on the submit button as usual. So wait for an end. It's telling you it can take a moment to create a new domain. So the reason I didn't use Canon gadgets is because it has so many subdomains and it would be so complicated for you guys. So now we have this youtube.prozent.net. To see whether it's successful, we just copy this link. I'll just copy link. And I'll open an, a new tab and I'll say I'll copy paste that link. And when I enter, let's see what our it entails. And as you and as you can see, it's empty as of now. And when we go to our file manager, let's open our file manager. When you open uh, our file manager, you can see we already have this directory called youtube.prozent.net and here is where uh, you can upload your website, all your files, all your images and stuff. Uh, if you've not watched my previous video, I discussed on how you can host your website, your PHP website, or HTML and stuff. 
so and if you like this video please don't forget to subscribe and leave a comment let me know what you want us to discuss so that's how you create a subdomain but let's say now you have a, a big project which has so many databases and you want to create a database for your website so to do that you go to your main main page on, on your cpanel and look for something called the databases and here we have a section of databases just be before you go, you get to domains you have these databases maybe you are using php my admin or, or maybe postgresql database it's all the same the the, the difference is just the uh, the manipulation of the the view the view is is uh, a bit different for postgresql compared to php my admin but since we are using php i'll opt for php my admin so to create a new database you'll click this mysql databases you won't click php my admin when you click php my admin it will redirect you to the the out uh, the layout of the database is like the one you see in the ZAMP server or the WAMP server. So to create a new database in a cPanel, you go to MySQL databases. And here you'll find this uh, page where you it's called MySQL databases and it's telling you to create a new database. It's showing how you can modi modify a database and gives you a list of the databases that you have in your domain. So you can delete from here uh, from this action, but we don't want to delete any of the databases. So we just want to create a new database. So to create a new database, just give it a new database name. Let's say I also call it YouTube for the website we created. We called it YouTube. So I'll say YouTube and click create database. And the database has been added successfully. And when you go, you go back here in on your list, you'll see that it's been added to the list so let's see and as you can see we have now the percent underscore youtube as the as the uh, our new database now how do you maybe import your database let's say you are creating your website locally which is which happens most of the time and you want not to upload uh, to import your database to your domain so to do that i'll go back to my cpanel my main page and i'll come to the, the databases and i'll click php my admin and then mind this might take a little time maybe five seconds or ten seconds to open and as you can see, this is the same view as the ZAMP server or the WAMP server. So this is our database. It's called the Brucent, and which is the username of this uh, domain. Yours might be different, let's say, if it's uh, something like, um, it's, let's say, Canon Gadgets underscore YouTube or code, Canon code. This is the present and you, our YouTube, the one we created to open it is just the same. And as you can see, it's saying no tables found in database. So to import your database is just the same as the way you do it in other, what do we call them? In not uh, in a locally, that is, let's say in ZAMP or in one server. So to import, just click this icon called import and you click browse and it'll take you it will open this uh, your file manager and you can select your sql file so in my case i don't think i have any sql uh, yeah i do 
um, maybe I can use this one just to show you guys then I'll get rid of it I'll click the this SQL file and then I'll click go to the bottom of that and click this import icon it's not an icon it's a button anyway but whichever and as you can see my database is quite big and yours might be a bit smaller or a bit much bigger but these are my the one that i've imported looks like but that's the concept of how you can import your database uh, in this in cpanel so the next thing that i'm going to show you i'm trying to make this video a little bit shorter so um the next thing that i'm going to show you so i will show to make this video short i'll create uh, a small PHP PHP file that, that will show you how to connect to this uh, database using P, PHP so to do that maybe you are using PDO or you are using uh, you are using the uh, the normal what do you call it <laughs> is it called the structure or the procedure something so uh, this one i'll show you how to connect to this database using php so i'll just click i'll create a new file i'll just call it um, database .php. But instead of creating it from here, uh, let me just open my VS Code. It's much, much faster because of the auto completion. And that will also take long. Let's just use the online version. So you'll do the normal thing open the PHP tags, and I'll create a variable I'll call it connection. And I'll say is equal to new my square line underscore connect. Right? I think it's that that way. Right? Correct me if I'm wrong. And then I'll say the first thing is always the local host. But this one will be a bit different. You'll check your domain uh your database online your php my admin and as you can see here your server is localhost colon that is 306 which is your port number here so here I, i'll use localhost port 306 I'll use uh, that 306 and the next one is always the username which normally we use the root in normal server on a, in a local server but here we don't use the root what we use is the username the username that you use to log into your cPanel let's say you are using uh, let's say Canon as the as the username to log into your cpanel that's the part, the username that you'll use to join this uh, to connect to your database here so your username here will be that username so in my case i won't tell you maybe i'll say my username is bruce and, and my password the password here that uh, it's compulsory because uh, every time you log into your cPanel, you always have a, a cPan, uh, not a cPanel, a password that you use to log in. So here you use the username that you used to log into your cPanel and the password that you used to log into your cPanel. Let's say in my case, I will just say one, two, three, four, five, six, 
maybe that's my password and then here the last one is always the database name and as you can see our database name is not just youtube like we named it it's brucent and underscore youtube you have to follow this so i'll say my database name will be equals to percent n underscore youtube and then i'll terminate this is how you connect to that database if you are using it you you have set param but the, the the main thing the main concept is how you use the the uh, the, the server the username the password and the database name it's all the same the concept is the same so if you like this video i'll end this video here if you like it please don't forget to subscribe and leave a comment and let me know what you want want us to discuss in the next video and i'll see you guys next time